Hello everyone, welcome back to Silver Tears Tarot. Today we're going to take a look at the month of April, but we're going to do it from the soulmate perspective. So yesterday, if you saw yesterday's reading, that was kind of a general big look at the month of April and it was fabulous. If you guys haven't seen that one, I highly recommend you take a few minutes and go back. So that one goes a little bit more broad um, compared with the soulmate reading as far as just what we're focusing on in your life because it could be anything could be family, your job, social things, you know, we're going to go more specific to the soulmate one today. But um, it, like I said, if you haven't seen it, go ahead and check it out. So this is going to be a general reading. Um, it's not going to resonate for everybody. It's really a reading for this collective. And so um, if you're a part of the collective, welcome in. Um, you may want to go ahead and subscribe and check out some other messages. Um, and you know, like I said, it won't, it won't resonate with everybody and that's okay. It's not supposed to, it's really supposed to resonate with the folks, um, who end up being a part of this collective. So like I said, if you are, then, um, then welcome. We're going to go ahead and take a look, um, starting with looking at the union and kind of the energy that's between the two of you across the month of April. So, as I was saying in yesterday's reading, um, you may have already been feeling it a little bit here um, lately. And, you know, so it doesn't always wait until the beginning of the month to start, which is why I like to do that general reading for the month just at the very tail end of the uh, previous month. I like to jump in and start thinking about general energy. So for the month of April, between the two of you, you've got some really um, good news over here and some work left to do over here. So with the, um, with the Empress, this is feeling like you're not quite ready yet for something, feeling like there's still some development that has to happen. It's not necessarily a bad thing. It is an unbalanced Empress, but it is not causing a lot of extra trouble. It's more just indicating that there is some work that needs to be done. The Five of Cups is the right energy in which to do that work, however. So the Five of Cups, and we just talked about this yesterday in the reading, um, when it's in the upright, it's really focusing on the things that are troubling you. It's focusing on those things that are very difficult without allowing yourself to see what could be positive, what the opportunities are. And here with it being in the reverse, that feels like taking that broader view. It feels like actually looking at the big picture and feeling like you can, um, you can take the good with the bad. So you can make a more educated response and a more educated um, decision about how you want to handle these things that you're very much still working on with this approach. And that's why I was saying this is the attitude with which you want to approach this. So this is really pretty great. Um, looking to see what else wants to come out here in the energy between the two of you. It's a constructive energy. It's a constructive energy that's a little bit different from some of the, um, the insanity that we saw, I guess, in March. It was there were so many winds blowing in different directions and people were reaching out. And um, in some cases that went okay. And in other cases, it was very much um, some of you reached out and didn't hear anything back at all. Some of you heard back very little. One person got an emoji. I mean, it's just, it's a constant moving situation and that they're constantly moving situation. And that's why we like to get that energetic backdrop or the energy that's happening between you and your person pretty frequently because it changes um, kind of like a mood. So we've got the Knight of Pentacles here in reverse. And one of the things that I was thinking already with this energy, especially with the fact that there's work to do, but there's this more well-rounded approach to it. It's, it's about how are you going to be able to, how is the fear going to impact this? And so the fear impacts your situation by still wanting to hold you back, but it has less opportunity to do so. So instead of feeling like, and we said this yesterday, instead of feeling like you're moving, you know, one step forward, two steps back, there may be this feeling of actually being able to make some ground. Now that is true. However, it is also, this is the place in your life where you're going to feel like you're having some resistance to that moving forward there is a little bit so this one is this knight of pentacles doesn't feel like it has come to a complete stop it just feels like sometimes it does stop and then waits and then kind of moves forward so it isn't so much backward movement as not always moving forward or not always moving forward quickly not always as quickly as you might think you might want to especially with your five of cups in reverse sort of emotions going on there, that's, um, that's going to lend you a little bit of help to get through some of this 
challenge that you're wanting to work through. But you've got the Six of Pentacles. So if you remember back in March, we had um, the Six of Pentacles came out as an area of focus and it came out in numerous readings. And it's all about that give and take of equal emotion. This is something that not just do you have to focus on the relationship with your soulmate, but also um, the relationships that you have in other places in your life. And so if you're not feeling like you're getting that equal give and take in other places in your life, then you're probably um, going to want to take a look at that and give yourself the opportunity to start working through it. Um, so that's that's one of the messages that wants to come through here. That's a little bit more of a general message, but it's very true about you and your person as well. There may be some slow progress, not necessarily backwards progress, but slow progress. You guys haven't learned everything that you need to learn, but you haven't even gotten all of the messages that you necessarily want to get. So this is the hermit. And this has you, um, both of you have gone into your respective thinking caves and you've been looking for some wisdom. Um, in your person's case, they might be kind of terrified to look at it. And we saw that in the um, in the reading a couple of days ago or whenever that was, it was, it was just a couple days ago. It was very recent. Um, I had a conversation with the divine masculine. It's been an ongoing conversation, but I came back and I was able to share with you some actual words from this. And this is just one divine masculine. It's not going to be everybody's perspective, but this was somebody who had the guts to come and have this conversation with me. And, you know, I can tell it was not a comfortable conversation for either one of us. However, <laughs> It is really interesting to know that concept of I'm as con I was as confused as you are, you know, and still looking for solutions. But in your person's case, not wanting to look those solutions as um, directly in the eye as you might. They are not necessarily um, going straight for the answers. And yet, OK, so we don't want that one. I thought we did. Um, the Six of Cups, though, this is going to benefit. OK, so this is thinking about the past. It's a focus on the past, but it's also energy from the past that creates this nostalgia that can't be ignored. So both of you have been um, already kind of picking up on this. It got really intense a few weeks, a couple weeks ago, um, through about maybe a week ago. And then a lot of people have kind of been feeling it calm down and mellow out a little bit, but it's not gone. There is still this sense of intense uh, nostalgia and it's a very six of cups feelings. I'm really glad this came out. However, if you're in a place um, like your person may be of trying not to think about it and trying not to um, to deal with things right now or to give yourself a break, this could be a pretty tough place um, because there's going to be some thinking about it. There is also this sense of struggle. It's not necessarily the time for the two of you um, to come back together in a place of reconciliation and reunion. Or if it is, it's going to maybe be a little bit tougher than what it would be if you came back together in a different time. Um, so be aware that if you're looking to make communication with your person because you've been in, in separation, and a lot of you are, um, it may be a little bit elusive. So there's this feeling of um, things are actually feeling a little bit better. It has a lot to do. It all stems from this Five of Cups in reverse. But the the Empress in reverse is not to be underestimated. So there is this feeling of there being a little bit more peace, a little bit more um, anxiety kind of falling away that might make you feel like, all right, you know what? Things are going a little bit better. Maybe it is about time for us to reconnect. This card would suggest that that may still be kind of difficult. That's a card of struggle. Um, and sometimes it's a card of opportunity to line things up. But I don't feel like that's true in most cases. Um, maybe it will be true in your case. And there's one person in particular that contacted me because a lot of you contact me and kind of share your stories. And then for that person, I'm kind of, you know, that's the reason I'm not going to say it isn't going to work. Uh, <laughs> but, but I think that there, um, I think it's going to be really difficult. There are some things that are coming out. Okay, so I want to address these separately. There is um, there is some kind of mystery that has not shown itself to you. It's not necessarily like there was anybody being deceptive. It just, the light wasn't hitting it yet. So it was something that you have been uh, maybe needing to learn, but you haven't quite gotten there just yet. This month, you're going to get a little bit more clarity on something with the moon in reverse. 
but it's not necessarily something that's going to throw you into a place of balance. This is something that you're very much still working on, and so is your person. There needs to be more of an opportunity for the two of you to truly be able to look down, um, just to look clearly at what it is that you're trying to solve. And so this is the right energy for you guys to do it. Now you need the time to do it. So you don't have this temperance in the upright because you're still working through, this is a hard one balance and you're still working through the piece where you're winning it. Um, so that's part of what's going on in this month's energy. Not necessarily bad. Sometimes when you see the temperance card in reverse, it's a little bit scary. Um, all right. I got a whole bunch of cards we don't need here, but we do need the fool. So we um, we saw the fool come out yesterday and this one was really about um, jumping into something that's new, jumping into something that's new that was not another romantic relationship. It was something that's going to ignite your soul that we've been talking about. We've been seeing it come through. There is this encouragement for you to cultivate this energy, to be able to get out of your own way and to jump in, which is beautiful, um, way easier said than done way easier said than done. So I want to add to it um, what I'm feeling here because I feel like it might be um, easier to help yourself release and go into this direction if you understand that the act of releasing and going into this direction is also going to help you very much in this situation. It's true for both of you. So I can't tell your person to go out and start that business that they've been thinking about, but I can suggest it to you. You know, whether it's writing a book, making a business, whatever that looks like, jumping into a new job, there are so many ways that this could look. Um, one person has, has talked about going on medical missions. That's completely different from anything I just said, but not completely different from this concept. It's all very much jumping into something exciting, jumping into something new. Um, and there's a heavy energy of that, but it's not heavy in a bad way. It's heavy in a, this is the time sort of energy. That's really fabulous. So let's see what else is impacting the two of you as you go through April. What else is happening with the two of you this month? And could be things that are impacting you um, that come from somebody's life or, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to come from the two of you. So we've got the Princess of Pentacles. Okay, it is though. It is about you. So, uh, or it's about both of you, but it's not something that necessarily comes from outside. So what's impacting you most this the, during the course of this month with the Princess of Pentacles, this is a card of learning and really absorbing those lessons. And we know that there's a lot of that still in progress. We even see that the energy for doing so is pretty positive, but it's going to impact you that this hasn't been done. You're going to really notice the impact of it. So every time that you try to take a shortcut around it, you're going to say, oh, you know what? Maybe I can accomplish what I want to accomplish, but I can't unsee the fact that, yes, here's this lesson staring me down once again. That's going to get old. I mean, that I speak from experience on this one. This gets really old when you um, you've learned the lessons, but you aren't for whatever reason incorporating them all just yet. They will rain down on you and you will start to notice them. So um, and I get a little bit of that feeling with this. It's not necessarily bad like you need it. It's just not fun. Um, yes, because there's a perspective that you don't yet have. And there is some piece of the discernment um, that hasn't been learned yet. So, OK. With the hanged man in reverse, it is, that's the perspective that may be right around the corner. It has that feeling to it, like it is right around the corner. You may even think that you have gathered this perspective to yourself. And then as it starts to dawn on you a little bit more, you go, oh, wait a minute, I see what I was missing now. And there's really, it's like it's around the corner and there's no way for you to see what's missing at this time. Um, so this Ten of Cups, though, this is one that we saw coming out an awful lot for a while there. Um, but this one is, it's about discernment. It's about what you do when you're faced with something amazing. When you're faced with something that looks like it's too good to be true, you've got to come up closer to it and truly understand what it is before you have a reaction. You've got to know how to build a response. And so that's part of what this lesson has been. Um, in this in this experience and it's trying to figure out when you do get up close to something and you realize wow you know what it is actually too good to be true 
this isn't ready yet. I've got to put this one back in the oven. You know, whatever it is, um, it's, it's a matter of knowing what to do. There's a lot of gray area. It's not yes or no or stay or go or trying to be figure out exactly which of, you know, two very disparate options you're going to take. Most of your life is going to be lived in that gray area. And this Ten of Cups is all about you absorbing lessons in that, um, about that gray area. And, and it is not an easy one. However, um, there is a stability within your uh, personal life that wants to come to you. This is true of both of you, okay? This is true of both of you. And I feel like this interaction that you guys have had here recently, and a lot of you, it's been purely spiritual interaction and not actually uh, talking together in the physical. Although for some of you, it has definitely been talking in the physical. Um, but with that spiritual interaction that the two of you guys have been having, it has helped to kind of shore up the type of energy that you ultimately are going to want to um, to have in your lives. And so this is this is strengthening you, even if they're not happy with their home life, because a lot of them are not. Even if you're not happy with your home life, because a lot of you are leaving or feeling like, you know, it leaves something to be desired, you're going to have a new handle on it. You're going to have a new... Um, a new perspective that helps you to um, to manage that just a little bit with the Ten of Pentacles. And then we have the Judgment card. This is that reconciliation. Um, for some of you, it is going to be coming back together, having a conversation and having a little bit of a reconciliation, but it doesn't feel like it necessarily results in a reunion right away. For others of you, it's not necessarily a conversation with them. It's reconciliation of the energy, but you're already very much moving down that road. Um, Let's see what else comes out because we saw the judgment card come out yesterday and that was much more a reconciliation within the self. This is also a reconciliation within the self, um, but it feels like it is born of uh, that reconciliation that has been happening between the two of you because that's really kind of what's happening in this in this energy It's a reconciliation but for some reason there's not an ability to move forward and really do something could be fear could be third party energy a lot of them it is third party energy so this is talking about that so this is the lover's card and it says there's a strong bond here, but for some reason, the two of you are unable to move toward one another. It's a choice you're unable to make. The lover's card is about choice, um, but it's also often about a choice in love. And so here's something, here's a choice that you're not necessarily able to make in love, um, but there's a reason. And it could be that one of you or both of you is married. I know in a lot of cases, we've got folks that are one of one or both of you is married. Um, but even a long-term relationship or there's one situation I know of where the people work in the same place. They work on the same team and that really can't be in order for them to move together because there's something that causes that to be a lot of friction. And it's not like a corporate policy. It's more around we just can't make this work. There's too much um, friction and competition, you know, but there's something that has to change to deliver um, to deliver you into a place where that friction and competition is no longer going to be an issue, whether it's a restructuring of a household or somebody gets a different job or just whatever that looks like. There's something that has to happen in order to make this a choice because it really is ultimately going to be um, a choice. It's just not one that feels like it's available right now. There's a lot more going on, though, with the devil card in the upright, the two of you. And okay, so this is something that you've probably noticed in the last um, in the last couple of weeks. Anyway, um, there's this bond between the two of you, which of course we see it over there, and we know it's there. Um, but it is acting like shackles. It's acting like chains, and it's keeping you in an uncomfortable position where there's really not very much. Um, for you to do to get out of it, except for almost to just change the nature of who and what you are. Um, in the meantime, though, so your person is experiencing the same thing and their, their response has been to hide. There's been a lot of hiding sort of energy, which is what we see with this Knight of Swords. Um, instead of making a decisive move forward, which is probably what they were doing earlier on, um, they started to feel the instability that we feel here um, in this Four of Wands in the reverse. And that caused them to feel a little bit more like they can't move forward. Suddenly they become um, afraid to move forward or they become completely resistant to the concept of moving forward or even opening up because there's just too much going on here in this devil energy, too much that's holding them at bay and making it feel like 
they don't have a choice in the matter. Oh, wait, hold on. We're done. Okay. So, um, I wanted to, I, I, I like to try and figure out whether I'm done before I start, um, going into the cards again. I think though, when we get into the extended, we're going to look into, um, what's happening emotionally across the course of this month, because there's a lot here that can drive emotion, but I'm not necessarily seeing how that emotion really plays out. So I know maybe some of it will, um, will come up here, um, but this is really going to be more about what you can, what the two of you can be focused on, what both of you should be focused on during the course of the month of April. So I don't know um, how much emotion will come out. We'll certainly read it if it does, but we'll look more into that when we get into the extended, because this is the sort of thing that um, emotion is going to play pretty heavily into it. So let's go ahead and look at what it is that you can best be focused on. And of course, we're looking at it for the whole month. So not just what's that next step or what does the whole path look like, but um, kind of what does that, what does it look like just as you're looking through the month of April? All right. It's finding those places that you're not let, not yet healed. So the four of swords is um, the four of swords is a card of rest and rejuvenation and healing and taking it easy and allowing yourself to just soak up the good. Um, but when we have it here in the reverse, it's got this feeling of healing not occurring. It's not taking place the way that somebody would want it to be taking place, the way that you would want it to be taking place. And your person is not feeling like they're able to move forward because they feel a little frozen in their healing. So that's not to say that healing has not occurred, um, but just that they are not necessarily having that perception that much ground has been covered so you've got the king of swords and the um and the king of swords is all about taking a look at the big picture and being able to build a strategy but with this energy it's a matter of this that's a particularly difficult thing to do so one of the things that you're going to want to cultivate and you can do this through the usage of the eight of cups the eight of cups is that quest for that ninth cup it's the quest for that wish fulfillment it's the i'm looking for something that allows me to be happy we know you may need to get out of your own way a little bit just based on every single reading that has come out here in the recent past however um this king of swords in the upright that strategic ability to look at the big picture and determine what's needed would really come in handy and so being able to work on that will allow you um, to do a better job in your quest for that wish fulfillment so you can figure out what it is that's going to um, that's going to make you happy. There also has to be some effort around this third party energy. So um, there's a third party energy and there's confusion around it, which is what we see here with the um, with the seven of cups. And I just want to go ahead and turn the rest of these over so that they don't get um, confusing. I only use however many cards I'm supposed to use and the rest of them I just put back into the deck. So this third party energy, there is a third party energy with almost every one of you, if not every one of you. Some of it is um, other relationship or relationships that are factoring in. Some of it, it's a family so sort of situation. Some of it, it's work, like we were saying earlier. But there is a third party energy that is really kind of taking um, taking things. It's causing this to not be a choice. It's part of the reason that this isn't a choice. But there is so much confusion wrapped around this because there is... Um, a lot of just kind of un not understanding which pieces it's like not being able to tell the difference between fact and opinion in some cases um so we've got a matter of somebody who is saying but i want things to really be a certain way why isn't it that way um which it makes sense that you would want something to be a certain way but not necessarily that it would automatically be that way but you may have a person who is saying but why not? I don't get it. Why is it not going my way? And the answer is because sometimes, you know, it doesn't. But it's um, it's a particular, and it might even be you having these emotions and looking at yourself and saying, so I, I feel that I'm, feel that I want something that um, I'm just incredibly frustrated that I'm not receiving it. But the key is to look a little bit more differently because there is, com there's confusion in this. Um, there's a matter of not necessarily understanding what the options are, not necessarily understanding which options can be done together either. So that's something. What's mutually exclusive and what's not? What can be inclusive? Where are the options where you can have your cake and eat it too and it's not even imbalanced, you know? 
again, a great job for this King of Swords sort of energy, but not necessarily something that you can do across each other. It's more something where you would do it for yourself and your person would have to do it for themselves. But there needs to be some um, movement in the area of this Three of Cups in order to make some success. Um, and this King of Swords, if you guys can get to a place where at least individually you're able to start working on those strategies and coming coming forward with something that's going to help you just going to help you overall. This is about helping yourself because it is not necessarily that you are in an, uh, in a situation where you can work directly with your person to find solutions. And so it's going to have to be um, each of you working together a little bit or individually rather a little bit to get to that place because something is definitely not right. And we have this situation where we know from yesterday's reading, there's a door that should be opening with you, but we also know that right now that door between the two of you, you and your person is stoppered on both sides. Um, things are not right. It's stoppered on both sides. You have this clog of energy that basically kind of can't get through. And, um, and this feeling of you've already, um, this is the seven of pentacles. It's a card of investment, but what it feels like right now is it's, you've already kind of dug yourself in so far. You're not quite sure how you're going to undig. This really feels like your person's energy. And it sounds like what that divine masculine said the other day. So there's something um, that you may want to keep in mind. This door though, as you're working on this third party energy, as you're um, kind of opening things up so that you're able to go out and do something that's a little bit different, create the strategy to get out of your own way, you're going to start dissolving that doorstop that's on your side of the door. And that means you're going to be in a position to be able to better leave your door open um, and allow your person to walk through it without actively watching for it. Now, the Justice card, I saved this one for last because it has a couple of different meanings. There's a small group of you for whom this change in the Three of Cups, the change in that third party energy that turns this situation into a choice is actually the dissolution of a relationship that just enables it. Um, but for those folks, I would say be careful because the second meaning of this card continues to exist, uh, continues to apply. For, for pretty much everybody, I would say there is an imbalance here. Um, it's an imbalance that has, you guys, as you've already had your relationship, have built this imbalance a little bit, just kind of built it in there. Um, and it's a matter of emotions not flowing back and forth. It's like that Six of Pentacles feeling. Um, that we had over here. And it was that focus on equal back and forth, equal give and take. We can see that there's something that's not balanced here. So even as you look at that investment, try to decide what the best course of action is, recognize um, that even if somebody's household is, is dissolving, their marriage is dissolving, the relationship is changing, um, you're still going to have to fix the issue of the imbalance. So we're going to get you an oracle card. I love to get an oracle card that goes over the top and just kind of gives you um, a little bit more insight. And this is going to be insight into April with soulmates. And then we'll go into um, the extended and we will look at emotion for sure. We will also look at that um, a little bit more deeply into what it is that you guys need to be doing because this was good information, but not a ton, not a ton of it. We've got time to collaborate. Oh, we want both. We've got time to collaborate and freedom is yours. This is the ant spirit and the horse spirit. And these are, I love these because um, they're, they're spirit animal. This is a spirit animal oracle, but it's got um, the concepts that you would very much associate with those animals in a lot of cases. Ants are known for collaboration, but one of the interesting things about them is they're not necessarily communicating when they do it. There seems to be this wordless ability for them to communicate as they move through their lives and as they move through their day. Um, and this is something that kind of is happening within your relationship on the spiritual side. We've already seen a little bit of that uh, evidence of that in this reading, and we felt it over the last couple of weeks. Um, it's not always comfortable, but it is going to help to advance you forward. We also have the horse spirit saying that freedom is yours because absolutely it is. One of the things that you're going to discover as you're moving through the seven of cups, um, this, what are my options and which ones are mutually exclusive, what can be done together, etc. One of the things that you're going to discover is how much of a choice you have in how many places. 
it's really going to be kind of amazing. And that's something that I feel like it comes to you across the course of April. But it also has to do with really releasing attachment to the outcomes. Because the more you can uh, release attachment to the outcomes, the more you create an opportunity for those outcomes to be whatever they need to be. You're creating freedom when you release attachment to those outcomes. So that's what else wanted to come off of this card. That one's pretty deep, but it's a really good message. Um, we're going to go ahead and go into the extended. We're going to look into your person's emotions a little bit and kind of what's happening with the relationship across April. Um, but we're also going to go in a little bit deeper on what you can be doing because we always want to spend some time on your lessons and give you that opportunity as well. So thank you so much. Um, subscribe if you're part of the... Um, if you're part of the collective, you may want to subscribe and check out some of the other messages. And I will look forward to seeing you again, um, either in that Vimeo um, extended reading where the link is down below or in another reading in the future.